This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 53 of Healthy Critters Radio on the Horse Radio Network. Healthy Critters Radio is brought to you by Biostar US. Find them online at biostarus.com. On today's show, we share coping tips for dealing with stress. The breed of the show is the Doberman. In Critter Nutrition, we focus on what products to give when, part two. And in Coffee Clutch, we share the qualities we look for when buying a horse. Tune in. Welcome to the show, Tig. Welcome to the show, Patty. How are you doing? Yeah, sorry. I'm good. Welcome to the show, Jen. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I think I think Tigger has finally I've gone um, over the edge. He's gone over the edge. <laughs> yes. The New Year has already created way more stress than it should. Oh, God. It's it's, um, it's unbelievable. Tra- okay, the so the transition from Virginia is to Florida each year is stressful <laughs> enough. It yes. yes, and you know you're going away for several months, so there's a lot of things you have to tie up and and you know do, and then you find out that your puppy um, has a possible fracture of her hind leg, and um, you are rushing to get to the vet, and your car won't start because the battery is history. And you call the car dealer, and they said, "Oh, we have time to see, to work on it this afternoon. Bring it in." And you go, but "It doesn't start." Oh. And I'm leaving for Florida the next day. And then you try to jump the the dead car, but it doesn't doesn't do anything. <laughs> so the you have to get dead car, yeah, a tow truck. To come down and pick the car up and drive it an hour away to the dealership. Meanwhile, you're sitting in the vet's office waiting for the x-rays to come back on whether your dog has a displacement fracture or just a regular fracture or no fracture at all. So and that the ruling was, was no fracture, no right? No fracture. So that's good. That's Let's look at the positive stuff. It's a soft tissue. That was good. Um, but you know, it's you can you can deal with one thing, you know, that's pretty like oh my god. But when it's, it's a double dose on a day that you have all this stuff on your list that you have to do. Yeah, uh, it yeah. certainly doesn't help though. It no, no, no. But it does make you dig deep, doesn't it? Find that surrender. Dig, dig deep and, and figure out the ways to de-stress. And wishing you could drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At 8 o'clock in the morning. And one thing that I really recognized in this really stressful day was how unmindful I become. Yeah. I'm just not. I mean, it, it's a miracle I didn't get into some kind of car accident because I was just so not mindful of what I was doing. Which is really, again, I like to look at things like the glass half full. Another positive thing that you are now aware of that because before you probably had no idea. And so now it's something, if you do get stressed, you're going to say, wow, I've got to, I've got to keep in mind where I am. And if I'm driving or do I pull over and get myself back together? I mean, I think those are, these are good positive things to start off the new year that you're figuring out about yourself. It's like a new toy. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing in Tigger's head is like a brand new Christmas toy. (laughs) And you know what? And just to add insult to injury, the cold, the relentless two weeks of cold. Yeah. And you just go. It's hit everywhere. It's like an Arctic freeze. But but we, we don't, I mean, usually we'll get these little clippers and it'll be, you know, two or three days. But this has been two weeks. Yeah. Where it's just cold, 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 cold. And this morning it was like zero. And yeah, that stinks. It's just, it, it's, it, it, it makes, I think it, it contributes to um, 
something being out of whack or having a crisis, it just makes it even worse. Well, especially if you're shaking during it. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're up shaking. That's never good. I don't care who you are. What if the house and, you and, think you, you like know, it? This, this was, this, you know how everything sort of collides. So, you know, thinking that, you know, I have a very, this very lame puppy and uh, Peter goes out and, because I said, eh, you know, you might as well just look at the propane tank uh, down to 20%. And oh, I just filled it three weeks ago. Wow. And, yeah. And it's the, oh my gosh, what happens if it runs out? And I'm in Florida mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah, can't get yeah, there. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, it goes on, it just spirals out of control. Out of control. Yeah. But you've got a couple of, you got your car back, right? I, I did. I got my car back and the world's most expensive battery known to man. Because, you okay. know, towing for an hour is an expensive proposition. And then uh, Subaru in their brilliance um, requires in the later model Subarus that the battery be c- calibrated with the car because the car is so electronic that if I just mm-hmm. went down and bought a battery and put it in, there could be some things that didn't work like the electric windows and <laughs> stuff like oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah, kind of good to know. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, gee whiz. Um, okay, but it's it's you know one hundred and seventy dollars for a battery. Yeah, and calibration. Yeah, and to- and then you add the towing on top of it. So on top yeah. of my dog's you had an expensive day. drugs and <laughs> was just, yeah, you had an expensive day. Okay, I, <laughs> I did, and it's dark and it's cold and you know. But tomorrow is a new day, and um, the sun should be coming in. You're heading to Florida. Maybe. Which will be great. And it's going to be, um, I did talk to my daughter, Phoebe, who lives in Wellington. She said, yes, Mom, it's going to be a little colder for the next week. And I said, well, what do you mean by cold? And she says, well, it's going to be 60s. <laughs> which I <laughs> think, you know, is actually, that's going to be perfect because it allows the dogs to kind of, adapt and not go from zero to 80 degrees which is really hard yep. on them just like it is on the horses and it will be yeah and the horses too so um so i may yeah. not get out of here tomorrow but i i will definitely get out of here by thursday god willing the creek don't rise <laughs> <laughs> this could be a book it this there you go adventures on the way to welly world <laughs> well you've had a stressful day too yeah, I have mine. Mine just just because like I, I like to put too much uh, too much in one day. I like to overcram and then I forget like important things. <laughs> you know, like you know like people's radio birthdays, show. you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But it all it all turned out fine. I'm I feel very grateful and thankful for that. And um, I um, I learned some things about myself today that. I'm going to um, start to do differently when I'm stressed out. Thank you guys for helping us all figure those new tips out, which will always be good. So, yeah. But, we'll do um, a follow-up. I'm happy. To... Pardon me? We'll do a follow-up. Follow-up in a couple yeah. months to see how we're doing on our new techniques of Yeah, coping. I actually think that would be a great idea. We'll, we'll, all the, we'll see if we can take some tips on how to, to improve our, our stress level and see if we actually do them. I think that's a great follow-up. Perfect. Hello. I, <laughs> I think we've lost Patty. Yes, we have. Patty, where are you, Patty? Patty left it's the not room. Your Patty. Patty, you disobedient person. <laughs> How hard would it be, Patty, to simply show up and do your job? I'm so, I'm so sorry, Hedwig. Sorry, I just dropped you. Patty, Hi. I am so disappointed. I have previously held you in very high esteem, and now you have disappointed me. I am so sorry, Hedwig. I have to tell you, I'm disappointing myself today. <laughs> well. So, Hedwig, we have a, a, an important question for you. Yes. We want to know how you deal with stress. Everybody, year end of the, the end, end of the year things, and then the beginning of the year very stressful for a lot of people and a lot of people travel this time of year, especially us horse people. So how do, how do you, Hedwig, deal with stress? I am traveling right now in my truck. 
I'm, I'm not that stressed still, although I could always use editor cheese to make things go more smoothly. <laughs> but anyway, I, you know, I primarily allow my servant to experience stress for me. That seems the best approach. When she's worrying about getting things packed up or are leaving at a certain time or going somewhere or whatever, I just sort of let her handle it and I just sometimes lie upside down. <laughs> and have oh. a little nap. So okay. is your advice to our listeners that they just let somebody else get stressed and just lie on your back with all your limbs in the air and just let them stress out? Well, if I may suggest that people refer to the photograph I posted on my Facebook page from when we were visiting my grandfather in upstate New York for New Year's, I was engaging in a little upside downness. And then also there were photos from my grandmother's house too, but they have not been posted because the servant is a slacker. <laughs> but in all of these of instances, yours. I was upside down. Okay, so, so listeners, okay. you've you heard it here from Hedwig. The key to stress: <laughs> lie upside down with your legs and hand, arms in the air. Well, when Perfect. you have your sister, okay, I'm going to try have to that do it right, right now. Next to your sister. Okay, well, that may prove to be a little bit more difficult, but that I think that's excellent advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because she's got it, you know fine she can take care of it or direct the staff while you're having a little rest perfect gotcha. well thank you Hetty. You can, you can also make little grunty noises like this <laughs> to show your contentment and satisfaction with the world <laughs> well maybe maybe hedwig you could get your servant to post a picture on your on your facebook page of uh exactly what that non that non-stressful position is i think your listeners would truly appreciate that. It's up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Posted two days ago. Yeah. No problem. (laughs) Okay, great. Thank you. (laughs) Well, happy new year. Happy new year to you as well. May 2018 bring you many important things such as joy and happiness and peace and cheese and cheese and sausage and cheese. (laughs) Thank you, Hetty. Exactly. Hetty, safe driving to Florida. Thank you. We are in North Carolina. Ooh, getting closer. Okay. Getting closer. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, Eddie. Bye. And now it's time for the breed of the show. And now we're at the breed of the show segment of our program today. And I have chosen to talk about uh, Dobermans. Um, Tigger, I don't think you've actually ever had a Doberman, right? No. I, I, as you remember, I had, um, I had my, my great dog Echo, um, and I had one of the female Doberman and they are, um, really quite a wonderful dog. Um, I think a lot of people <clears throat> view them as, um, you know, they, they view them as very, sometimes very high strung, sort of like attack dogs and, um, and they are very, very intelligent and they do, they do use them for many different types of, um, sports and they do use them for attack dogs, but they really are, they remind me a lot of the greyhounds. Um, and I think, uh, Jennifer, you and Glenn have told me this is they, they tend to just spud on the couch. Well, Dobermans can truly, they can make their very large bodies as small as a Yorkshire Terrier on your lap. <laughs> and they're really great dogs. Um, they're great. I think they're great family dogs. They're great dogs to have around farms. However, the biggest thing about them as a breed is that you just have to train them, which is like any breed. Of course, we know that with our, with our Aussies, right? Takes you can't yep. just let them be just in anything. But the thing, the things that I like um, about Doberans is they've got a great size. They're a very clean dog. They're a short coated dog if for the listeners that aren't very familiar with them. They've got a longer um, sort of pointed snout and they um, classically in years past, they would crop their ears, um, which a lot of people are truly against. And um, at this point, if I were ever to get another one now, I would never crop their ears, even though they're a very dramatic um, beautiful dog with their ears done. They're just as beautiful with their ears natural. And I believe um, in England, you're not allowed to do that or dock their tails. Did you know that? Did you guys know that? In the UK. Yeah. I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. And I like that. I mean, and in the EU, I think most countries in the EU don't allow docking or ear. Yeah. They've really gotten to that. Yeah. Um, 
and um, and they're obviously an AKC registered breed, um, and they've been around for a long time. And what I, in my very limited experience with them, there was two different sort of uh, bloodlines. One was the one that would you would use for showing, which was more of the American style, which of course obviously had European bloodlines in there, but they were always breeding them for a little bit of a bigger dog, um, and they were a little less sharp and intense. And then there was more of the German, the German or Dutch lines of the dogs that made them a little bit sharper, which um, sharper meaning um, quicker. Um, Keen. Uh, need definitely, yeah, like definitely needing training. Um, and they do a sport that's called Schutzen, which I played around with for a while, which was sort of fun. They have three phases to it where there's the attack work, which they do attacking with a sleeve. The person's completely protected. And the dog learns to attack the sleeve, not the person. Um, scent work, which is a lot of fun, and then obedience. And that is where I personally find that the Doberman is a fantastic dog because their obedience, if you work with them like any other dog, but they just are so willing to please. And um, they're fun in agility. And so obviously obedience and agility kind of tie in together. But if you, <clears throat> um, they're, they're, I had a female, I don't know if you ever met Ezra. I she, did, um, I did. My, she was such a good dog. She was such a great family dog. And I had decided that I wanted to do agility with her. And I did not know what I was doing, but I did my little basic obedience. And I was able to get like, there's three legs to a title. And I was able to get two legs of a title in one show, which is, you know, wow. probably the people that are listening to this are going, oh boy, you, that's nothing. But um, I was just, it was so much fun because this dog was so smart and tried so hard and just so easy to be around, could bring her around on any other dogs. And, um, and a lot of it just comes back from the same, the fact that they have to be very well trained, but I think they're a super family dog. Um, I didn't have them around when my kids were younger, but great traveling companions. They were great around the horses. Um, you know, like I said, you can put them in the car and they probably can get as small as head look, which is saying a lot. Um, <laughs> there's a, not there's a great a- there's such a wide variety to the, our next door neighbor has two Dobermans Mm -hmm. and the one of them is what I would call your stereotypical high strung fear barking, intimidating character. And the other one is just the absolute opposite, just tail wagon, never met anybody. She didn't like just the sweetest dog on the earth. Hard to hear a peep out of her. So there's, yeah. you know, there's yeah. such a variety there. And I think you're right when you started this whole conversation out that they're not all that stereotype. There's There are breeders out there who mm-hmm. are creating a really good, well-rounded personality type that's good for a family that doesn't necessarily want to teach yep, exactly. their dog to, to attack anybody or anything and doesn't need one that barks all the time. So that, that's very interesting. I didn't right. know a lot of that stuff about uh, Doberman Pinchers. Yeah, they're just, and they're a great dog, and their history goes way back. I mean, I really got into it when I had mine, but, you know, it's just, it was a very well thought out breed. And of course it was, again, initially for protection, but, um, you know, they just can be super family dogs. And um, I don't, I wouldn't recommend them being in an apartment unless you can really, you know, be active with them um, a lot. But um, they just were a terrific breed, and um, I, I really did enjoy them. A very good friend of mine has one now, and she's just the sweetest the sweetest fun dog and she's a, a farm dog. So I think they're a great breed and Tigger, that's one to put on your list. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, you're too, you got your hands full right now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. She's, she's yeah. good. And here we are at Critter Nutrition. And we're going to talk about what product to use when, and this is part two of a series. Customers often ask, what is the best Biostar product for specific health challenges and conditions? And so in part two of our series, we answer the most common questions from customers. Question one, which Biostar product should I use with my insulin-resistant horse? If your insulin-resistant horse is overweight, then Optimum Healthy Weight, a multivitamin mineral with chromin X3, which helps to regulate sugar and fat metabolism, is a great place to start. We know how critical diet is managing metabolic disease, specifically the non-structural carbohydrates. The calculations for non-structural carbohydrates are starch percent plus 
WSC percent, which should add up to 10% or less for metabolic horses. WSC represents water soluble carbohydrates. If you have your hay analyzed, you will see an additional testing value called ESC. This is a subset of WSC and includes glucose, fructose, sucrose, lactose, and the fructooligosaccharides. WSC includes ESC plus other fructans. Optimum healthy weight has an NSC of 9.8%. Chia seeds are important for all horses because of their omega-3 content and their high proline content. Proline is an amino acid that is essential for collagen synthesis. Chia seeds are especially beneficial for metabolic horses and easy keepers because of their high mucilage content, which helps to slow the digestion of carbohydrates. Biostar's impulsion provides the bioresin shilajit, which works to fortify the mitochondria of the cells. Mitochondria are responsible for cellular respiration and the production of energy currency of the cell known as ATP. Metabolic imbalances have been traced to underactive mitochondria. For metabolic horses and easy keepers that need more energy for work and training, impulsion helps the body provide more cellular energy, which also benefits the metabolism of the horse. The NSC of impulsion is 5.1%. Biostar's Tridosha is my go-to for metabolic horses on spring and fall pasture because it helps support both the pituitary and adrenal glands with additional liver and antioxidant support. In metabolic horses, including Cushing's disease, the pituitary produces excessive amounts of ACTH, which then causes the adrenal gland to produce excessive cortisol. Tridosha provides chase berry for pituitary support, holy basil for adrenal support, and the Ayurvedic Indian gooseberry, known as amla, which supports healthy metabolism and is balancing to the body system. Horses and ponies prone to laminitic episodes do well on the glandular support of tridosha. What are the products to support Cushing's horses? Diet and exercise are as important for Cushing's horses as they are for insulin-resistant horses. Keeping the NSC at 10% or less is critical. If your Cushing's horse is overweight, then optimum healthy weight, the NSC of 9.8%, combined with a low NSC diet is recommended. If your Cushing's horse is underweight, adding an active yeast, such as Biostar's BioYeast, helps support the hindgut in the digestion and utilization of fiber, and thereby helps the horse gain weight from the hay and forage provided. You can add coconut meal, cool stance, for added fat, protein, and fiber. Cold processed oils can also be added for additional fat. With Cushing's horses, I go with camelina oil because of its high omega-3 content and high vitamin E. Tridosha supports healthy pituitary and adrenal gland functions with the combination of chaseberry, holy basil, Indian gooseberry um, to support the excessive amounts of ACTH and uh, cortisol that are produced in Cushing's horses. A study published in November in uh, 2013 in Germany showed, quote, collected data provides evidence of the positive effects that chaseberry preparation has on the clinical symptoms of horses and ponies suffering from PPID, which is Cushing's. Quality of life was improved in the study population, end quote. Pergolide is the standard medication for Cushing's because it controls ACTH. Tridosha will not interfere with pergolide and supports the horse in additional ways, lowering cortisol and providing organic milk thistle for the liver, organic schizandra berry for immune support. Biostar's impulsion is beneficial to Cushing's horses that need more energy and muscle, providing the bioresin shilajit for mitochondria support plus foods high in the branch chain amino acids for muscle building and the beneficial fats from organic pumpkin seed meal and coconut meal. Provides 19% protein, 11.7% fat, and an NSC of 5.1. It's important to note the complete feeds for metabolic horses, IR and Cushing's. These companies can be very clever with how they state starch and sugar. Some use ESC percent and not 
WSC, thus lowering the total NSC percentage on their labels. Make sure the company you buy complete feed from is using WSC plus starch for their NSC calculations. How to support gastric ulcer horses. If your horse has gastric ulcers, they should be treated with a meprazole, gastroguard, or ulcer guard. Once treatment is completed, the problem commonly arises if the horse starts acting ulcery again a few weeks or a few months later. In some cases, the ulcer has actually returned, and in other cases, it's more of an ulcer sensitivity. That is, the ulcer hasn't formed, but the mucosa is irritated and uncomfortable. When a horse is working, it's the one time during the day that he or she is not eating. Horses produce more than 10 gallons of saliva per day when they are constantly eating. The salivary glands produce bicarbonate, which buffers and protects the lining of the stomach and raises the pH. But when horses are working, the stomach is unprotected and the bicarbonate protection of saliva is halted. In the non-glandular region, gastric acid can splash and irritate the mucosa, even causing an acid burn. Biostar's tummies is a unique blend of microcrystallized aloe that is medical grade that works like the drug sucralfrate to coat and protect the stomach and GI tract. This unique aloe is combined with one of nature's richest sources of the amino acid glutamine, which is cabbage. Glutamine is used by the body to heal intestinal mucosa. Because tummies is in the form of a cookie, you can feed it by hand 30 to 40 minutes before riding as you are tacking up and help protect your horse's GI stomach from acid burn. The other component of ulcers is stress. Theracami Q is Biostar's unique approach to ulcers and stress because it targets the brain-gut adrenal axis. Under stress, the body releases more cortisol. That sets off a chain reaction of neurotransmitters, particularly norepinephrine, which mobilizes the brain and body for action, the so-called flight or fight response. It also increases restlessness and anxiety and reduces blood flow to the gastrointestinal system. Cortisol also increases gastric acid secretion, with which if unbuffered from saliva, can irritate the delicate mucosa further. Research has shown that the gut is the second brain, which can affect mood and well-being. If the GI tract is irritated, the adrenal gland is signaled, and more cortisol is released, thereby stimulating more norepinephrine. So the cycle can start in the GI tract, in the adrenal gland, or in the brain. The important point is that all three systems are affected. Theracom helps to reduce cortisol, increase the neurotransmitter serotonin, and reduce inflammation in the GI tract. What products do you recommend for hindgut ulcers? Hindgut ulcers are becoming increasingly common in performance horses. The protocol I have seen that works the best for most hindgut ulcer horses are the medications sucralfate and misoprostol. Changing the diet for 30 days to give the hindgut a rest by substituting hay for soaked hay cubes, chaff hay or chopped hay, and plenty of forage if available. A horse that typically gets six flakes of hay a day, I will reduce to two flakes and substitute the chaff hay and soaked hay cubes throughout the day, giving one flake of hay in the morning and one flake at night. The purpose is to give the hind gut a rest from the high lignin in the stems of the hay. So for 30 days, the horse gets more chopped hay and soaked cubes than the horse does stemmy hay flakes. To support the horse, we recommend Empower Hemp Seed Oil and Bioflora. Hemp seed oil is unique in that it provides GLA, which regulates the prostaglandins that regulate inflammation. Misoprostol is a synthetic prostaglandin. As the horse starts transitioning in lower doses of misoprostol, the GLA in hemp oil helps the regulation of inflammation. In essence, the GLA in hemp oil does what misoprostol does. Bioflora is a multi-strain probiotic with MOS, that is mano oligosaccharides. They are important in maintaining the correct pH of the hindgut. This is critical, as many hindgut ulcers are the result of a pH imbalance in the hindgut. <laughs> 
Real horses and real dogs are healthier, perform better, and recover more quickly on real food. That's why BioStar empowers horse and canine owners with 100% whole food nutrition, supplements, and feeding programs. BioStar products are made at their own certified non-GMO facility in Gordonsville, Virginia, using real fruit ingredients that are raw, freeze-dried, or dehydrated, never cooked, and are free from artificial flavors, colors, soy, corn, wheat, and molasses. The BioStar product line includes a wide range of whole food, horse and dog supplements, treats, and unique artisan poultices that embrace the ancient and traditional uses of clay and plants. Visit BioStarUS.com today and learn about whole foods and canine and equine nutrition so you can make the best decisions about the care and health of your horses and dogs. That's BioStarUS.com. Whole food nutrition the way nature intended. And we've now arrived at Coffee Clatch, and we're going to talk about the qualities that we look for when buying a horse. And I, I'm going to start by saying the, the first quality I look for is the eye. Oh, what is the yeah, horse's eye telling me? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it doesn't have anything to do with the shape or anything. It's just, is there a connection between myself and the horse and the horse and me and that's for me that's number one is is the connection on the ground with the eye I agree I think that's a big one yeah I think that it's a subjective and completely emotional thing but you're right you just you make eye contact with the horse and it either clicks or it doesn't Yep. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally get it. And you you read old old horse books, and they talk all the time about the horse having a, a, a soft eye or mm-hmm. an intelligent eye or what they used to call pig eye, which is a small one. But I think mm-hmm. you nailed it. It's really not about the shape, the color. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's it's about what's on the inside of the eye. Yep. Which sounds so mumbo jumbo but it really is i'm sorry <laughs> the eye is the window to the soul yeah and and it is absolutely and what an eye that speaks to you might not speak to someone else it is not exactly. a reflection on anything that's else a about very the horse, good point you know? yeah that's a very good point there's there's a human for every horse mm-hmm. you know just because it absolutely doesn't appeal to absolutely me, you know? and they can react differently to, to you know different people but i think the i think the eye is a very very big thing very big thing. And, and like you said, other people can look at one eye and love it. And then Tigger may go, well, that's not my type of eye. So it's very, it's very personal. Yes, right. Absolutely. It's very personal. What Patty, do what's, you what's first on your list? Well, I was going to say, I was going to say the eye and I, I like, um, I've always liked the kind of bigger kind of bulbous sort of looking like, I like their big bulby eyes and, and, but you know, I don't care. I, mean, I like them to be bigger because I think that they tend to, to look a little softer to me. Um, I really like the horse to be sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Someone had to say it. Um, then why is I it that really, so many um, of us settle for something else? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that a, would be know, obvious. I'll never forget one that said, it doesn't make any difference how much you pay for a lame horse. It's still lame because I do dressage. I don't want them kicked out too much behind their hind legs. And I like the neck to set on high and, you know, um, and a, you know, beautiful sloping neck. I love necks. I think necks are so pretty. And I just, you know, I like, I like a generally, um, you know, just handsome, straight moving horse. I'm not too, I don't have a huge objection to a horse that, you know, that wings or paddles or whatever, but I just like the, their path itself that they travel in to be very straight. I always like to watch them walking towards me and away from me. Um, but I also like to see that they're equally flexible, so I always bring a carrot or something to see if the horse, when it reaches around one side to the other, if they seem equal on each side. Um, I've, I've found more strange things by doing that type of test um, in the last probably 10 years of my life. And a farrier years ago said that to me, you go look at a horse, make sure, make sure they're equally supple on both sides. And I was like, okay. And so that's just a little thing that I carry with me when I go and I look at them. That's brilliant. How about you, Jen? That's brilliant. The carrot thing, because it takes out, 
all of the other ingredients. You can't say uh-huh. there's something with the rider, the tack, the training, and it just you mm-hmm. hold the carrot there. They're either going to turn their head or they're not. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, and you do it before you get on, too. Yeah. Yeah, you do it before you get on. That's yeah. brilliant. I love that. I'm gonna pa- I'm gonna pack that away in my in my bag of tricks. In your in your little gen brain. Good. In my little gen brain. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> for for me, I, I you know, obviously that's a biggie for me. Sound is lovely, although I think I've probably owned way more unsound horses than sound ones. <laughs> um but for me, um, it has always been their personality or their bearing. I'm a very, Mm -hmm. if for people who are familiar with the whole um, elements in, in the Chinese traditional Chinese medicine, I'm a serious metal. So I like a certain personality type, Mm -hmm. which is Mm -hmm. the worst thing in the world for me to own. So I recognize that. So I, I'm really big on person. I was like, Oh, that cat, that's the one I really love. And that's the one I shouldn't have. So we're going to take the next step over. Oh, that's here. good to know, though. So, yes, because certain personality type humans, this has got nothing to do with your writing skill or your writing education. It's your personality type will mesh better with certain horse personalities. Um, and the kind Ooh. of horse personality I love to compete with is also the same one that makes me crazy. But they also make excellent athletes. Fires make excellent athletes. I love fire horses. Fires are fantastic athletes, but they're also extremely challenging. And for, uh-huh. some, for someone who's a metal, it can it can get a little tough. But personality is absolutely whenever I would look for myself, look for my students, etc. Um, it's a, it's really easy to train a horse to do shoulder ends. It's really hard to train a horse out of his personality. That's that's the way I figured it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a really, really cool way to look at that. I don't know if I would have ever thought of it like that. Yeah. That's some good advice. How do, how do people find out more about the different types of personalities? Well, in, in traditional Chinese medis, medicine, if you look for uh, five elements of traditional Chinese medicine, we actually did a whole series, uh, Dr. Wendy Ying, who co-hosts the Driving Radio Show. Uh, She's a a veterinarian, but she's also a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. Say that five times fast. Uh, And she did a whole series, and she covered each different personality type. Um, Mm -hmm. And they're over on the driving show, but they're also on Horse Tip Daily. But you can, there's lots and lots and lots of literature out there. And there's actually a really good book. Yes, there. I was just thinking about that. For horses, there's one called "Is Your Horse a Rock Star." And okay. they take the system they use on people. Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of the system. <clears throat> uh, where you take the energy and the personality type and you combine them together. So each you pick one from each column and they apply it to horses and they use a lot of actual examples. And that one's really a fun and interesting read for people who want to understand better how personality type plays into how they're trained because they have suggestions if the horse has these personality type this column from this one from column a and this one from column b these types of training techniques and these types of careers um are your best bets these training techniques and these types of careers are going to be more challenging for that personality type so is your horse a rock star is a really fun read for that yeah that's that's a that's that's kind of an interesting thing. I, I like that. Uh, thinking of it from that advantage is uh, different. Yeah. How about well, cool. Yeah. Um, my other um, a- element when I'm when I'm looking to buy a horse is how the horse is 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 in the stall with me. And sometimes in a bind situation, you don't get to see that the horse is tacked up in the cross ties. You ride it and then, you know, they show you another or blah, blah, blah. But if I'm really interested, I I want to interact with that horse in his stall or her stall. Does she oh, yeah. stay away from me? Does she come to me? How, you know, is it is it a horse that really is protective of of their space? Are they curious? Are they interested? Um, it just tells me a lot. It tells, it's a little bit like looking at puppies. Do you turn them over and rub their belly and see how they do? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like your your test. I think that's it. Yeah, because a lot of horses are wonderful out of the cross ties and not so good. When they're in yeah, the stall. you're right. Yeah, you put them in the stalls. Deal breaker. Yeah, very different personality traits. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, and that may not be a deal breaker for somebody, but people just need to know if it's a if it's an amateur person that um you know can't deal with a horse like that in the stall. It's good to know. It's really good to know. Exactly. It's it's one that's of those a, that's things a good one where. Thing. If the horse is a little standoffish in the stall or has a propensity for um, stepping on you when there's feed in his bucket and things like that, Mm -hmm. it may or may Mm -hmm. not be a deal breaker, but it certainly is an ingredient that you need to be aware of from my point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. Have you ever gone and looked, have you ever gone, Tigger, and looked at a horse for sale that when you went into the stall, um, what you discovered there was very surprising compared to what you discovered about the horse outside of his stall? Yes. Interesting. I liked the horse better in the stall. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Wow. Because I've had I've had the opposite happen where I put the horse in the stall and I was like, huh, that surprises me. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, I didn't really like riding the horse or we didn't oh, really oh, oh, click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I, after the horse was cooled out and in the stall, and then I stopped by, opened the stall door, stepped in, asked permission, of course, of the horse. And the horse was totally different, like all over me. How interesting. He wanted to go home Mm. with you. I love you, really. I love you, man. (laughs) Yeah. Or I think you're okay, you know. (laughs) And maybe in that instance, and this was in Europe, if I knew then what I know now, I would have opted to try the horse the next day again. How interesting. But I didn't because I made my decision on, I really didn't like riding this horse. Interesting. Now that's, mm-hmm. that's, that leads to another discussion. Maybe we'll do this on another show is when you're testing a horse and that happens, the initial ride is eh, maybe I'll pass. And then you get to hang out with the horse one-on-one and you go, well, maybe I like him more than I thought I did. Where you draw the line at questioning yourself. Ooh, we could, we'll save that for another. Ooh, discussion. that would be good. Yeah. yeah. That is a good one. That's a good one. I like that. All right. So if you, uh, if you have special things that you look for in a horse besides personality and soundness and a lovely eye that speaks to you, we want to hear about it. Post it on the Facebook yes. page. And where's yeah. that Facebook page at, Tigger? Healthy Critters Radio. Dun, da, da, da. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks to our sponsor, Biostar US. You can find them online at biostarus.com. Get the Horse Radio Network phone app on iOS or Android by searching for Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and easy to use. For details about today's show, go to healthycrittersradio.com where you can find links, photos, and more information about our guests. As always, we love your feedback. Please follow us on Facebook under Healthy Critters Radio. Be sure to visit all the great shows on Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Love your dog. Hug your horse. Feed your chickens. Clean your litter box. Dance with your goat. Slither with your snakes. Howl at the moon. Hang with your hamster. Party with your parrot. Waddle with your walrus. Outwit your otter. Cuddle your cows. Rap with your raptor. Go chipping with your chipmunks. Forgive your fox. While hedging your hog. We also recommend that you rack with your raccoon. Gyrate with your giraffe. Meditate with a meerkat. Uber with your orangutan. Facebook with your flamingo. Ponder with your panda. Walk with your wookie. Yawn with your yak. Twitter with your toucan. Go raining with your reindeer. Dropbox your dragon. (laughs) 